Hello, and welcome to the Hormone Genius Podcast. Um, we're excited to be here today, Jamie and I, with a really special guest. We have Esther Bloom with us, and I'm so excited to talk to Esther about her expertise. Esther comes with a wealth of knowledge, and she's known, I think, as the paleo chick. Is that right, Esther? Oh, the diet was paleo chic. Yeah. Okay. Paleo <laughs> chic, right. So I love that, but I'm so excited to learn more about how you help women fix their health. And, and I know for you, your expertise is clinical nutrition, but really you believe that every person can change where they're at and take a chronic or an acute health condition and really make a difference in their lives. So you have an expertise in balancing hormones, healing the gut helping people lose body fat, helping them reverse again, autoimmune disease, anti-inflammatory. So this is all stuff that our listeners on the Hormone Genius podcast really want to learn about. And you've written four, I think, best-selling books, um, Esther, uh, Cavemen Don't Get Fat. Cave Eat, women don't get fat. Cave women don't get fat. <laughs> Eat, drink, and be gorgeous. Uh, the secrets of being gorgeous. And I know one of your books um, that you can get off of your website is a free download, um, which is a detox, you know, start. So I was able to take a look at that. I think that is awesome. So thank you so much, Esther, for being with us today and um, you know, gracing us with your presence and your expertise. Oh, thank you for having me. Truly, what a pleasure. So Let's tell get, yeah. Yeah, I was gonna just jump in here. Um Tell us a little bit about how you got started with all of this. How did you catch the fever? Yeah, <laughs> it's definitely my blood. Uh, my grandfather was uh, an amazing ears, nose and throat surgeon. He took my tonsils out. It, he had an operating room in his house in Brooklyn. What? And he, yeah. And my grandmother, his wife was a dietitian, and then he trained her to be an anesthesiologist. So she put the ether mask over my face and he took my tonsils out when I was like six or seven, I was always getting ear infections and tonsillitis and all this. So they took my tonsils out. And then, um, my father was a dermatologist and my mom was a nurse. So, and we had pharmacists in the family. I mean, medical talk nonstop, watch my dad do house calls and consultations in the aisles of our grocery store and on the street, like everyone knew him. He was a really gifted and compassionate man. So, and, and sciences came very easily to me in school, but I didn't want to go to medical school and nutrition is basically, you know, a degree in clinical nutrition undergrad, it's pre-med, it's just less uh, physics and um, less chemistry, still a lot. But aside from that, everything else. So <clears throat> I was like, this is cool. So I went into it really for the science and it wasn't, and the fact that I knew I wanted to own my own business one day. And uh, I, I spent the first five years of my career in hospitals, but I knew I wanted to have a flexibility in my career and have a family and have the balance, which I do have now. So I'm very grateful for it. But it's interesting because I, I went into functional medicine about five years in and really thank God I did because <clears throat> it's enabled me to help my own health issues as they've come up over the years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of people don't understand what that word means even, uh, Esther. So if you would just in your own words, what is your understanding of functional medicine? Cause I just think this is important. I think for listeners, cause we hear it, it's like a buzzword almost. <laughs> yes. Functional medicine or integrative is another word I'll use. Uh, it really looks at the whole body. If you look at, and this is kind of the way I was trained too, as a clinical dietitian, you know, the Western medicine teaching model teaches you kind of about one body part and doesn't go into the level of detail. You know, I, I have a, a master's in clinical nutrition as well. And we didn't look at the studies talking about nutrients and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the FODMAP diet or what used to be the specific carbohydrate diet, or, you know, we didn't look at real dietary interventions. We looked at very standardized, you know, low fat, low cholesterol diets, um, you know, just approved by the heart association or the dietetic association. It was very limited in its scope. So functional medicine or integrated medicine takes into account the whole person and connects the dots and says, wow, you know, you're, uh, you're having a lot of brain fog. Let's look under the hood and check out what's going on in your gut, or you're having depression or anxiety. Let's look at the inflammation in your gut. You may be low in certain bacteria that would otherwise 
keep your brain calm and happy. Or let's look at your progesterone levels and your stress and your sleep and your alcohol and caffeine intake. Let's look at your blood sugar curve. So it's, you know, uh, one of my colleagues explained this to me and I thought it was genius. They said, your health, it's a continuum. Like your body's like a big rubber band, right? And if you pull tension in one area, it's going to make another area taut as well. Like it, it t- just encompasses all of your systems and puts all the pieces together, which I love. I, I, it makes a lot more sense too, right. because so many of us have, you know, invisible uh, health conditions, right? Mm-hmm. We're walking down the street, but yeah, and, and we look beautiful and dress well and makeup on. And yet we're suffering with horrible debility, debilitating menstrual cramps. We can't get out of bed two days a month. We have migraines that lead us to vomiting, you know, or we have autoimmune conditions or Lyme and mold. You know, I call those invisible disabilities where we look fine, but we're not fine. And our tests, our traditional medical tests show up completely normal. So the doctor says, you're fine. You're normal. Um, there's nothing wrong with you. It must all be in your head. Just go home and relax. And we've all been told that, or most people listening to this podcast have been told that. I remember a doctor gave me at one point a copy of a Kabbalah and told me to put it under my pillow and wrote me a prescription for Xanax. I was like, wow, this is a real low moment in my <laughs> healing journey. I mean, comical, right? I was like, okay, I'm going to, I'm get, totally going to write about this, but man, this is upsetting. Um, so we've all been gaslit because we don't fit in the standardized boxes. So functional medicine enables us to all work deeper and just say, okay, we know what you don't have, but what else is possible? Or, you know, maybe you need to run the five additional thyroid tests that are missing, right? Let's run a more complete blood panel. Let's look at your vitamin D. Let's look at your inflammatory markers because traditional blood panels also cover a very limited scope and don't do uh, deeper level testing. So that is me functional medicine. Isn't that such a bummer, Esther? And maybe this won't be the case forever. I hope not. But when you, you know, as we're working with women and we're encouraging them to get those, you know, more extensive labs, insurance, they're so expensive. Insurance doesn't cover all of that. So, you know, that's just a bummer. And I don't know if you have any recommendations for those who are looking for more, you know, information about their levels. I do. So my functional medicine doctor, like every year she prescribes me about $5,000 worth of blood tests and insurance says, I'm not going to cover it. And her office, uh, you know, petitions it or um, appeals it. And every year I get it covered. So, you know, if your doctor has to go to bat for you and justify it, a lot of doctors, traditional doctors are afraid to do this. They're afraid they're going to lose their license. They say, well, I don't, these tests are unnecessary and expensive. Meanwhile, I have picked up numerous clients, autoimmune conditions, their diabetes, their thyroid issues. So to me, they are medically necessary and they're a lot cheaper than a hospital bill or a year's worth of medication. So it's too, yeah, Esther, I I find that the vast majority of my patients do not have issues with insurance coverage. So I I think if you are, you are dealing with medically necessary symptoms, you're going to get it covered. Um, in most cases, now that's not hands down, but there's also people that offer like packages. I know functional medicine, people sometimes offer like a cash price where you can get all those tests for, you know, one for all costs instead of 5,000, it's 350 or something for all those tests, which is awesome too. Yes, exactly. Okay. So tell us a little bit more Esther about some of the struggles that you experienced that led you to functional medicine. Oh my gosh. Where... <laughs> I know it's all a divine gift because it definitely helps me help my patients, but I'm currently managing mold and Lyme, which loves to manifest itself in insomnia. So that's kind of a beast, kind of a beast. And I'm perimenopausal. So I'm <laughs> dealing with all ends of the spectrum, but Um, before that, you know, I, what really was at the beginning of my journey was mercury toxicity. When I worked in the hospital, I ate these delicious tuna fish sandwiches every day. This middle Eastern, uh, stand, you know, had the, just these gorgeous sandwiches. And, uh, so I, my thyroid died and I was like, you know, five foot three and one twenty three, and really lean and lifting weights and running and going to the gym. And all of a sudden I packed on 20 pounds and like, 
literally exploded out of my clothes. Like I ripped, I wrote a whole blog about how I ripped my too tight dress en route to a wedding because it just, it tore all the way up to my butt what? <laughs> because I gained all this weight and I, it was so emotionally distressful. I was like, what is happening here or distressing? And uh, I didn't, I couldn't face buying new clothes. So my mom like crammed me into my dress, like for a wedding and she zipped me and poof, it was like my boob and bra fat just like exploded out the side. <laughs> we got me in, we're like, it's okay, it's okay, breathe. You know, the dress had a little stretch and she like put a cardigan on me and she's like, let's just go. So we're getting in the cab and then <laughs> like the dress just tore all the way up, like from the back seat. I was like, no. So that was really, but, but again, thank God I went through that because it really enabled me to be empathic towards my girls, my women who are struggling the same thing. They don't recognize their bodies. They gain a lot of weight overnight, either with PCOS or perimenopause or menopause. So it really enabled me to unpack the psychology of it and like, just be in this new body. I had no idea what to deal with. And you know, it was, it was great. I met my husband when I was at my heaviest weight and like, he was like, nah, I don't care. He didn't even notice. Like he really, he was just busy looking at my gorgeous tatas. He didn't right. care about the rest. Right. Cause those got bigger too. So, uh, so yeah, it was like start with mercury. And then, uh, after my son was born, like things have been wacky ever since then. And he's now 14 and a half. So I had like really bad. We, the doctors don't know exactly. It was some neuroinflammation, some Epstein bar. And then I think the Lyme hit somewhere in the middle of there. And I, I honestly am just going to a new doctor now to who's finally nailing the mold and the Lyme. We just, we didn't put all the pieces together. And I took four Lyme tests before we got it right. Like the fourth one got it right. So the first two were negative. The third was inconclusive. And then he was like, no, you're going to do my test which is Galaxy. For those of you out there, Galaxy runs a beautiful line panel that's highly sensitive and accurate. Yeah, line so, is yeah. a really hard thing to get oh. an accurate diagnosis on. And, yes. and, I, and I'm not an expert in that either. So it really takes a specialized practitioner to be able to find it and treat it right. And so I may recommend anybody out there who's thinking about that, you got to find someone who knows what they're doing because it's just really hard you know, and mold illness for that matter too, is, is a very difficult condition. And, and, you know, Western medicine doctors have no idea, um, about these conditions. So that's right. And the other thing I wanted to say about Lyme and mold, I can't remember. I lost my train of thought, but a little brain fog, I guess, but, um, no, it really, it, it makes a difference when you get the diagnosis, because then you can start healing. You put the pieces for neuroinflammation in place. You have a, a clear understanding mm -hmm. um, of what's going on. So you can treat it. Oh, that's what I was going to say. The galaxy test also tests for co-infections really yeah. well. So it checks for like Babesia, it checks for Bartonella, which I have. Um, and the co-infections can be worse than the Lyme itself. So you also want to make sure you check and, and you can treat it at, uh, you know, at the place I have it, it's, it's chronic and or reactivated from an old infection. So at this point I'm doing herbal antibiotics. I'm not doing traditional doxy anymore because I'm so past that. And so that's something else people need to know is once you've had it chronically, like doxy isn't going to touch it. You've really got to hammer away. And the clinical research does show that um, the herbal antibiotics work just as well. And they don't tear up your gut so much. What herbal antibiotics would you recommend? Well, so again, I'm not, I'm not a Lyme expert. I'll only tell you what I'm taking. Um, I'm taking very high doses of skullcap, cat's claw, and something called cryptolepis, which that herb is the doozy. That one like takes me down and makes me feel like I'm getting the flu. Cause my body is like, what is happening? My body, you when you have any kind of issue, right. That's messing with your gut and your immune function, your body likes homeostasis. So it would almost rather stay in a place where it has all these, uh, you know, pathogens with biofilms around it, than let go, letting it go. It's, it's painful for your body because your immune system doesn't know. It's like juggling many balls in the air and it doesn't know which one to Mm -hmm. to go for. So you got to do it slow and over the long term. Yeah. I, it, that's so important. And again, I just 
want to stress people should not try things on their own because it's, and I think this is a good analogy. It's kind of like the street cleaner coming through the street and it can kind of like brew up all of these things in your body. And if you don't have good detoxification pathways and you're just brewing it all out, you're going to feel horrible and maybe do some harm too. So again, just to stress, it's so important to find someone who knows how to treat those conditions properly. Um, Esther, I would love to focus on the perimenopause because mm. one of the, you know, although we have a lot of people listening to us in their twenties and thirties, I often am, you know, in my practice treating perimenopause and the perimenopausal weight gain. And since you mentioned, you know, your experience with just unexpected weight gain, we know that perimenopause a lot of times brings this kind of m- metabolic change. Um, and so how do you approach that with women? Cause I would love to give our listeners some ideas, you know, of how they can, you know, kind of handle that unexpected change and where to go for help. So let's start with diet and then let's talk about testing. Um, so with diet, you know, as you age, right. you uh, and as you go through perimenopause, your, uh, as your estrogen, your estrogen and progesterone can surge. And then, but once your cycle starts to get irregular, they can fall more and your cortisol levels can come up and your, uh, insulin levels can go off kilter, which means you start to get a muffin top or your muffin top turns into a big cake top. And all of a sudden you're like, wait, I I can't button up my jeans or my boobs are getting bigger. Or like, I look at a Hershey kiss across the room and gain five pounds, like what gives? So I try to remove the stressors to support your, um, your adrenal glands first, because after your ovarian reserves of progesterone estrogen start to decline, your body's going to turn to your adrenals and say, help me. You're my last hope, please. So you want to make sure that you're really supporting your adrenals. And that often means taking things off your plate, like caffeine, like alcohol. Both of those are very disruptive to sleep. You need sleep to help um, manage your insulin levels. Sleep is sort of the mother load, the, the foundation of feeling really amazing and balancing blood sugar. And both caffeine and alcohol disrupt your sleep in a big way and can jack up your cortisol levels. So, and that's often very hard for women to come to terms with, especially if alcohol has become a coping mechanism for your stress or you think you're not the life of the party without a drink. I'm here to tell you, you are still the life of the party with or without a drink. No one's gonna notice or care. Um, Get yourself some, you know, a little kombucha, which has a a touch of caffeine or just some Pellegrino and lime and put a shot of grapefruit juice in there. You know, shot won't wreak havoc on your blood sugar, but just really get your inflammation down by removing those and focusing on protein rich foods. So. Most women I see are severely deficient in protein, no matter what phase of life they're in. And we don't realize the average woman needs at least four to six ounces of protein at least three times a day, if not four. And so getting your breakfast high in protein is a stellar way to start the day because you're going to raise and sustain your serotonin and dopamine. So you feel mentally focused, but you're also going to sustain your blood sugar for up to six hours after you eat protein. You know, it really doesn't cause an insulin spike. It keeps your blood sugar stable along with fat. Um, So you want to make sure, and it also crushes cravings and um, prevents that 3 p.m. crash that you get. So protein removing stimulants, very, very important. Watching, you know, simple sugars, the breads, the pastas, and really going to more complex carbs, veggies, uh, fruits, sweet potatoes, you know, root vegetables, parsnips, turnips, all of those are wonderful. That's kind of your foundation. The other piece I do though, with perimenopause and menopause is I test, I don't guess because I joke, I'm a dietitian, not a magician. Mm -hmm. So I look at, um, serum levels. And again, this is really where Teresa, you shine in this department. I, I do look at Oh, an overall metabolic picture of uh, your inflammatory markers, a full thyroid panel, your vitamin D, your red blood cell, magnesium, and zinc, um, any autoimmune function, uh, any cardiac inflammatory markers. I like to get an overall picture of your inflammation <clears throat> and your health. I'll, of course, I'll look at insulin and glucose as well and do you know complete blood count, look at your ferritin levels, all that. 
Then I also do a Dutch and a GI map on my clients because why the gut? You know, I used to only test the Dutch, which is a dried urine test for comprehensive hormones. And I began to see I was really doing a disservice to my people because they weren't necessarily, they were getting a lot better, but they were still missing pieces with their digestion. So I do a GI map, which is a stool test you can do at home because the healthier your gut is, the better your experience going through perimenopause and menopause. If you are, if you are constantly recycling your estrogen in your gut wall, it's going to be problematic, especially if you decide one day to go on hormone replacement. If you're not pooping every day, it's going to be a problem. You can develop severe estrogen dominance if your body is not excreting it through your waste. You can also be very deficient in gut bugs that help support healthy brain biochemistry. We now know that if your uh, certain types of bacteria are deficient, you can have symptoms like anxiety, depression, you can have ADHD, ADD, you can have brain fog. So we're, uh, there's a new, I just read an article this week, there's a new term for um, healthy bacteria that support the gut brain connection. They're called psychobiotics. Hmm. So I was like, oh, that's really interesting. So we're learning so much about the gut brain connection, but also, you know, I treat a tremendous amount of dysbiosis and bacterial overgrowth and leaky gut sensitivities to gluten. And it's derived from a deficiency in hydrochloric acid. So stress can cause that too much booze, um, low progesterone, declining estrogen, all of those, when your hormones decline, you lose that beautiful mucus lining on the inside of your gut and you lose lab integrity. So you get real bloated, you're getting reflux. All of a sudden you don't tolerate gluten and dairy. And you're like, what is happening to my body? So if you can set your body up where, you know, you're cleaning out the, the sugar and the overstimulants from your diet, you're, you know, getting a nutrient rich diet, you're going to offset a lot of weight gain that most people get during perimenopause and menopause. So it's, it's an incredible tool. And on the flip side, you know, I do see women with PCOS too. And one of my clients, she was going to do her Dutch, right? She, we, she just started cleaning out her diet. She hasn't gotten a normal period in nine years. Like unless she was on birth control, she didn't even get a false period, right? Mm -hmm. Nothing happened. We switched up her diet. She takes her Dutch and within two days gets her period. I was like, okay. <laughs> so, and just, I just laughed. I was like, see, it's so, and I've had this happen to many women who are anovulatory. They're not ovulating. They're, they don't have enough progesterone to even ovulate. We switch up their diet and boom, they'll get a period after nine or 10 years of nothing. So it's, it's profound. And yeah. then uh, the other test I do is the Dutch. And again, that looks at you. It, it's wonderful. The Dutch and the GI map talk to each other. So I look at your production and your detox pathways of your hormones. I look at the neurotransmitters in your brain. Um, I look at your cortisol and it tells me a lot about what's going on with you metabolically. If you're insulin resistant, your thyroid's off. Um, if you're a candidate for herbs like chase tree, which can really raise your progesterone or are or we look circle back to the AMH and blood and say, are you even, are, are you anovulatory? Maybe it's time to do some topical or oral progesterone at that point. So I try to use it to see what types of nutrients people need, if they need herbs to balance hormones, or is it time for good old fashioned bioidentical hormone replacement therapy? That is amazing. There's so much that you unpacked there. <laughs> And it just goes to show you, I mean, you, you are, I mean, you should be a doctor like this is, it's so much detective work and it takes so much time. Like when, I mean, yes. I know these oh gosh, yes. take so much time to like analyze and really every individual person has their unique history, their unique, you know, genetics, their unique temperament and person and, and lifestyle. All of that has to be factored in with those yeah. tests to be able to make the right treatment plan. And there are, of course, some basics that every person should do. And, you know, I think we hear these over and over, you know, in general, like removing sugar, decreasing stress, hydrating, pooping every day. I mean, those are like every person really can take charge of their health and do those things. 
Um, and that's amazing. So you, you really gave us a lot to think about there. Thanks. Question. Um, what would one get through a Dutch test that they wouldn't get through like a serum level and vice versa? Mm. You're able to see, um, if the, if estrogens or tests, well, a, you're able to see if estrogens are aromatizing or converting to, uh, or pardon me, you're able to see if testosterones are aromatizing to estrogens. You're able to see if your estrogens are moving down the wrong pathway and causing and a more inflammatory pathway that's producing symptoms like breast tenderness, um, irritability, moodiness, um, heavy, heavy periods, clots. So if you're 16 OH or 4 OH or high, or even the 2 OH, like you're able to correlate a patient's symptoms with their uh, levels of estrogen. And you're also able to see methylation. If someone's methylation is a fancy word for detox, right? If you uh, take someone who has very low methylation or poor methylation or genetic defect, and then you put them on hormones, they're going to have a horrible time. They're going to feel much worse. If you have migraines that could worsen it, um, you know, it, it can bring all your symptoms back and make your body very imbalanced. So, and God forbid, you know, lead to uh, hormone dependent cancers. Mm -hmm. So that's another reason why I love the Dutch because someone who has a history of breast or ovarian or uterine cancer in their family, right? Maybe really suffering with menopausal symptoms, maybe a candidate for hormone replacement, but is terrified, understandably. So this enables me to give them peace of mind. And of course, once someone's on hormones, we recheck serum within six to eight weeks. We recheck the Dutch within three to six months. You know, we constantly recheck and make sure all systems are go. And it's another reason why I really like bioidentical because um, some forms, for example, you can take uh, an oral progesterone trochee and that bypasses the liver. So it's just absorbed gently into the system. It's much less side effects and issues than traditional hormone replacement. Yeah. The fear of cancer is of course, something I think inherent to all of us. I don't think anyone, you know, we all are affected by it in some way, but you know, the hormone part of it is really complicated. And I was just talking to several patients yesterday who have those fears and whose traditional doctors are so anti-hormone and, but they don't have a complete understanding of bioidentical versus synthetic. So it's just like all hormones are bad. And I often say, you know, God didn't make us with wrong, the wrong thing. <laughs> well, our hormones are inherently good. It's not the hormones that are the problem. It's not estrogen. That's the problem. It's not giving by even bioidentical estrogen. Is, that's the problem. It's all of the other things that factor into how our bodies relate to hormones and then all of the free radicals and assaults and inflammation that constantly stress our body in combination with those things that end up in causing cancer. But our own hormones are a good and protect the body. They don't harm the body. And so that's why you can, like you're saying, assure people that when we use bioidentical hormones appropriately, they don't cause cancer. And, it's, and in every way, they actually do a good to your body by protecting your brain, your heart, your bones and helping your quality of life. So it frustrates me uh, that these poor women suffer and are told by their doctors, all hormones are bad, never take that. And here they are again, just feeling like total crap um, and having no answers. A freaking man. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. You give a woman her quality of life back and uh, it's a game changer. And so often I, um, I do partner with doctors who do telemedicine who will prescribe hormones and they'll look at all my patients' tests and, uh, you know, we confer together and they, you know, prescribe the hormones and everyone's happy. So if your doctor doesn't want to prescribe hormones or just writes you off and says, well, this is normal. It's okay. It's just it's what your body's going through. That may be true, but normal is not the same as optimal. And there's no reason why you shouldn't have a healthy libido. You should have any vaginal dryness or painful sex or atrophy that you should have brain fog, that you should have depression and anxiety. Um, and, and as you also said, like lose your bone density and have brain fog and, 
um, you know, have developed heart disease. So if your doctor says no, you can always find a new doctor. Like people don't realize medicine's a business. If you don't love your practitioner or you feel they're not hearing you, you can find a new one. The mm-hmm. doctor police won't come show up at your door and arrest you. You, you don't, you don't worry about disappointing someone. You just have to take care of yourself. Mm-hmm. Right. I tell, yeah. I, I tell my clients that a lot, you know, it's okay. If you don't want to listen to your <laughs> doc, I mean, you hired them, you're paying them, right? Like they're not paying you. Um, so I just think that's interesting and a really yes. good point. Esther, what would you say to the woman? And I think you just said it, um, but maybe for the woman who is still very apprehensive, um, she's really suffering and struggling and she just wants a really quick fix, which we know isn't always easy. Um, but the women who are prescribed birth control for their perimenopause symptoms, what would you say? <laughs> these women if you were stuck in an elevator with them (laughs) yeah I'm so glad we're talking about this I'm actually writing my fifth book which is on menopause but it's gonna be a real roadmap but it applies to perimenopausal women too um so birth control suppresses ovulation if you're in perimenopause and your progesterone is declining your ovulation is already not happening So it's, and you're certainly not so worried about pregnancy. Obviously you you want to prevent it, but your body's really not in a place where you're as likely to get pregnant anyway. So it's not appropriate. Birth control is not appropriate for perimenopause or menopause and birth control suppresses your body's own natural production of hormones at the time when you need it the most, like you want that last hurrah, you want your hormones producing as long as possible to protect you from, you know, just the natural effects of, uh, of aging or decreased hormones. So no, you want to, a, you want to test and find out your levels. Okay. If you are in perimenopause, for example, and your progesterone is rock bottom, and you're already relatively estrogen dominant, the last thing you want is to go on birth control, taking more estrogen. You're not a candidate for estrogen at the time, and you don't want to prolong your periods longer than it should be. Um, So what you would do at that point, and a lot of my women start um, in perimenopause, either, you know, some chase tree or Vitex to get their progesterone up, or they start topical or oral progesterone only until a woman has not had her period for a year. Is she even a candidate for estrogen replacement therapy? So you don't want to put someone in perimenopause or menopause on the pill. You don't even want to put someone who has PCOS on the pill, (laughs) by the way, someone who's already severely deficient in progesterone. You do not want that. Do you think it's just that one thing that a doctor who might not know just says, I don't know how to deal with this. Here's the birth control pill. It'll look, it'll look normal. And that might be something that satisfies you. Do you feel like that's kind of what happens? Doctors just don't know what else to do. Your guess is as good as mine. I I'm not sure what the thought process is. I think they just, uh, you know, just fix it and forget about there. There aren't a lot of, for a traditionally trained physician, there aren't that many tools. Right. Right. I mean, my, my gynecologist, to be fair, she, yeah, she always wants to put me on the pill, but she's always talking to me about the importance of strength training and meditation. And she, you know, she's, she's intelligent and trained that way. But, um, you know, when I tell her like, no, you know, for example, when I was telling her about my insomnia, she's like, just take the pill. It will really help you. And I went and I was just like, let me just Google side effects. It was insomnia. (laughs) I was like, Mm -hmm. and by the way, you know, I wasn't low in estrogen. My hormones were pretty darn robust. Mm -hmm. So I didn't need the pill. It wasn't a deficiency. Like I should do a, I do these funny memes, you know, like reflux is not a Prilosec deficiency. I should say, you know, menopause is not a pill deficiency. Like it's not an oral contraceptive deficiency. Yeah. It's just the natural way your body's saying, I'm really not in a good place to have babies anymore. Let's, let's close this chapter and start a new one. I I think it's probably how they're trained, Jamie, because I, I really almost think they're trained to believe that women 
literally like their bodies are meant to have the pill. And that's the state of health hormonally that we were meant to be in. Like as if, you know, somehow some doctors created this birth control pill and, and this has become now the state of health all women should exist in Mm -hmm. instead of their own natural hormones. Mm -hmm. And, and so it's just like, they're in this box of, I think all women just need to be on the pill. All women should have a perfect cycle, which we know is a fake cycle, which we know is an endocrine disruption. Um, but it's how they're being trained <clears throat> ultimately. And it, and it's, it's really sad because like you said, there's all these side effects of the pill and so many of them are mental. So when you think about the gut, we know the birth control um, pill affects the gut lining. We know it causes disturbance there. Do you know how many patients I've had tell me they went off of the pill because they felt mentally weird, off balance, not themselves, completely anxious, Um, you know, it really can affect a woman's mental state of health. And now we have studies that prove that. Uh, And, you know, again, this is about helping women thrive, not just survive on some sort of a medicine. So uh, it's not what women really are looking for. And unfortunately, if that's all they're getting offered, they're just like, well, I guess I just got to try this. And they just keep going, you know, to a different medication to a different medication. And is it, I don't know the, I don't know the percentage, but a very high percentage of serotonin is created in the gut. 90%. You're spot on 90%. Yeah. So that all, that makes sense mm-hmm. that women are yeah. experiencing it because serotonin is like the feel good, um, chemical. So I don't, it's just interesting hormone. It is. Um, or or yeah. women are on, you know, IUDs or, um, or the Nuva ring, you know, it's the same. It, it has terrible side effects as well. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, in terms of suppression. Yeah, sure. Sure. Well, Esther, it was so fun talking with you gosh, today. You oh my gosh. I always love to end our episodes, um, with what you wish every young woman knew about her horm- hormone genius. I wish every woman knew her own power and that her intuition is never wrong. There's never anyone who comes to me who says, I know something's off. Who's wrong. Mm-hmm be it male or female. Okay. So, you know, your body, you're living in it every day. Listen to it. Your body is talking to you. Your body wants to be in this place of radiant health, and it's going to give you signs and signals if it's not happy. So honor that, find a practitioner who will listen to you, who will run the necessary tests and do a complete panel, save some money and invest because it will save you time and money in the end, right? People are afraid to spend money. They're like, no, I'm just going to do what my insurance covers. Well, you're going to waste a lot of time and money. Just pay up front, get a permanent solution to your problems, unpack and look at everything under the hood. Mm -hmm. And then you'll really be so empowered and educated after that. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, Esther, how can people follow you? Okay. find you? So A, I have... Five consultations I've put in, I've opened up my calendar spot. So for your wonderful listeners out there, um, you go to Esther Blum, that's E-S-T-H-E-R-B-L-U-M, estherblum.com forward slash call, C-A-L-L. This is where we get on the phone for 30 minutes. We give you three customized strategies for you to solve a health problem. I am on Instagram at gorgeous Esther, and I have a YouTube channel. Esther Blum. You can go to estherblum.com. You'll find all of that there, all my books and social media links and all of that. Awesome. Very thank good. You. Well, thank you, Esther. So thank much. you, um, lady. So is there anything else you wanted to share or add? No, I just think people should reach out to Esther. She has a wealth of knowledge to share. And I think she's going to really help change a lot of people's lives. And she already has. So thank you so much for being with us and sharing your, again, your expertise with us today.